Today we have the tube amp regulator. It's the amp regulator that fits into the air tube of like a uh, Dreamline uh, or uh, Wildcat. Um, it's also compatible with uh, the Streamline or pretty much any 34 millimeter tube if you want to add a regulator. Any case, this comes naturally in the Dreamline air tubes and the Wildcat. Uh, like halfway through Mark II and all Mark III's will have this. Uh, so in any case, we're going to go through the disassembly, the reassembly, and also uh, how to reseal it in the different parts. Alright, so we're going to start off with uh, the disassembly so that I can explain all the parts. Alright, so uh, to start the disassembly, uh, we're going we're gonna to do basically two different parts of the regulator. There's one part right here, and there's another part right here. This breaks in two, or not breaks, but unscrews and threads in two. Um, in any case, it fits into the air tube like this. This would be the muzzle end. This would be the breech end. Um, an easy way to extract the regulator out of the air tube is to take a 5mm Allen, stick in this hole, and twist clockwise as you pull out. That way, uh, twisting clockwise, you're not possibly unthreading this, um, which you don't want loose parts inside your air tube, obviously, and that way your regular really would be stuck inside the air tube. Uh, in any case, if you turn clockwise and pull out, there'll be enough force, this, uh, tight, it's a high enough tolerance, tight enough tolerance right here on the 5mm that the 5mm grabs it really nice and can give you some, uh, some torque in order to be able to pull it out. So in any case, uh, we're going to go ahead and take this part out. So like I said, it takes 5mm, we're going to turn it counterclockwise to make it loose. And also you want to do this uh, facing up because there's loose parts on the inside. It's going to be removing your regulator piston with your regulator washers. So see there's a, there's a washer left in there, but here is your regulator piston sticking out with your regulator washers and uh, I guess you can just call this the brass cap. Alright, I'm going to take this part real fast and be right back. So the first part is here. It is the brass cap. This is where the regular piston sits into and allows the movement of the regulator piston in and out. Here is the regulator piston with the washers. There's going to be 10 washers. It's the same washers as the AMP regulator and the Impact and Crown, and also the Dreamline Bottle Edition, as well as the same regulator piston. It's the 16 millimeter regulator piston out of the, uh, out of the previous regulators. Now on to the second section. Uh, as you can see here, there are two holes right here that you could use a spanner in order to help take this off. But you can also just grab this in a vise if you like to twist it off. It's that easy as well. Also, on the second half, there is another cap back here, which we can go ahead and remove. It is a 3mm Allen. There you go. Wants to give it back. There we go. And there we go. This is the side that makes sure uh, makes sure that the ball doesn't over travel. Uh, this is how the uh, regulator is adjusted. There's a screw that goes into here. It has a point, and on that point is a steel ball. That steel ball is what determines the travel of the regulator screw, which determines the travel of the regulator piston. So, there's the little cap that keeps everything inside. Now for the regulator screw, it's a 2mm Allen. Since we already have the cap off, we're going to do this with the insides facing vertical. Go ahead and pull out, see as I said it is pointed, so that's how it adjusts on the ball there. I'm going to go ahead and set this to the side. And with that, the steel ball will fall right out. It's a 5mm steel ball. So inside here, we have the regulator screw. 
Uh, it's actually no longer a screw. It's just what uh, provides the adjustment towards the regulator piston. You can just take a small Allen key, any, uh, any size that'll fit, go in through the back right here, and press it out. Just like so. And see, it's the same configuration as the regulator screw and the bottle edition of the amp regulator, except there's no threading. There's just the two O-rings and a cap. This cap right here is where the steel ball sits against, just like so. And then these, the actual regulator adjustment screw, or I guess you could call it the adjustment screw for this one, is what presses that steel ball, which determines how far and out this travels. All right, so now we don't have any parts attached. We're gonna go ahead and pull these two parts, of, uh, two parts of the regulator apart, so you can see the inside. Okay, so now we have the two different parts of the regulator housing. Your first part here, which is where your brass cap and your regulator piston was, has no internal O-rings. It just has your one external O-ring, 23 by 2.5. And then here's your second part. This is the part that had the regulator uh, um, screw, the adjustment screw, the steel ball, and the stainless or the uh, um, the the other side of the cap. It does have one small internal O-ring. It's a four by one point five, and then it has an external O-ring, twenty-three by two point five. For the next part. We have the silver cap. This O-ring is a 5x2 NBR70. Then, then we have the brass cap. This is an 11.1x1.78 NBR70. We have the brass, uh, I guess you could call it the piston adjustment or like I call it, I still call it the regular screw, even though it no longer has threads. This is two. Uh, there, there's quantity of two, and the size is two by one NBR ninety. It's important to have a ninety strength O-ring here, uh, or else it will not hold up to the pressure, and you will have regulator creep. Last but not least is the well-known regulator piston, sixteen millimeters long. The O-ring on this is also 4 by 1.5 NBR70, the same as the internal O-ring on the second part of the regulator housing. Also just wanted to re-mention, both of these O-rings are durometer 70, and so is this. This is the 4 by 1.5 durometer 70, or strength NBR70, however you want to name it. Okay, so now we're going to go over the uh, how to change the seals um, and how to properly reassemble the regular after resealing it. This is if you have any sort of problem with your regular, whether it's a leak or if uh, you have any sort of regulator creep. If you have any regulator creep, that will be caused by the last, the bottom O-ring right here on your regulator. Uh, the piston adjustment, I guess you call it the brass, uh, it used to be a regulator screw. If you have uh, bleeding out of the regulator uh, or the uh, atmosphere hole, which is right here, which will bleed out the atmosphere hole of your air tube, it can either be one of these two, 23 by 2.5, or it could be this, 4 by 1.5, or it could be this, 4 by 1.5. Here we have our two caps. Both of these O-rings as well would cause a leak out of the regular atmosphere hole. Alright, so to change this O-ring, we're going to take our handy dandy dental pick here. There's a shoulder right here nice little groove so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our dental pick slide under the o-ring and take it the other direction grab it pull it across pull it out and over 
Take our new O-ring, it's already pre-lubed. You know, stretch it over and push it into place. Go ahead and take you some lube. Just a little tiny bit. And smear it all across. You don't need to over lube anytime your O rings. If you over lube it, especially with your regulator, it can clog the different holes and stuff like that and cause regulation issues. Uh, you also don't want to under lube it because then you can cause damage to your O rings and they might not seal. The O ring uh, or the lube helps the o-ring in uh, two different ways it helps it uh, expand properly helps fills in uh, tight gaps so where it help uh, it seals properly and then also it keeps moisture away from the o-rings uh, it, it keeps it lubricated with by keeping moisture away I know it's kind of a weird topic but it's the way that rubber works uh, so by keeping the moisture away it keeps it lubricated and by keeping it lubricated it's gonna last a lot longer all right I'm gonna set that down Come to our next one, another 23 by 1.5. Once again, dental pick. You can take it at edge, slide it under the O ring, pull it up and over. Ooh, just stab myself. Don't do that, don't stab yourself. That's not very smart. Anyways, uh, so then we've got the rim there. We've got a next O ring, 23 by 2.5. I'm gonna try to stretch it over rather than you don't want to roll it over because that can cause the o-ring to twist if the o-ring twists then you can have issues uh, with it sealing properly in the such whereas if you stretch it over it's going to properly uh, rebound into the groove and it's not going to be twisted up and the o-ring uh, is going to be properly seated again we're going to just take just a little bit of lube just a little bit go around Make sure it's nice and loose. On this piece, we have one more O-ring, a 4 by 1.5. This one's a little bit trickier. You're going to take the dental pick, stab it down into, and pry up. And then grab this side once you've pushed it out of the groove and pull out. To replace, you've got your 4 by 1.5, you're going to pinch it slightly, you're going to get it into the o-ring groove right there, and you're going to slightly press it down, it'll work itself into the o-ring groove itself. If you need to, if it doesn't want to go into the groove, you can take your dental pick or whatever tool you're using and set it into the o-ring groove and hold it there as you press down might take a little bit of time there you go starting to set in and there you go it's finally all solid all the way set in sometimes you have to take your tool and go around the rim to make sure it's properly seated but it is we're going to apply just a little bit more lube now all you're going to do Put it right over the hole just like that so that whenever the piston goes in it'll put it onto the o-ring all right so our next piece is the brass cap once again we're going to take our handy dandy dental pick we're going to go under the o-ring groove pull out over the shoulder out and over the shoulder and there you go pop it right on off Grab a new O-ring. You're gonna pull it around. Make sure it's on there, it's not twisted up. Just a little bit of lube. It's okay to get a little bit of lube on the threading. That's not a problem. I 
Okay, for the next piece we've got the silver cap. This one we're going to do a little bit differently than the brass. We're going to hook it. And we're going to drag it away from the top. Just like so. Again, that's a 5x2 MBR70. So here we go, our new O-ring. This one you don't really have much of a choice but to roll. But at the same time, it doesn't really roll that much, but also like I said, said at the same time, uh, it's not really an important O-ring whether it leaks or not. A little bit of loop. Be sure to have yourself a paper towel nearby because your hands will get messy. Alright, second to last piece, the regulator piston. Dental pick, we're going to go off the base. So be sure to be careful with this. This is Delrin, it's not metal, so it's very easy to damage. You're going to slide your dental pick under the o-ring, come up from the bottom, and go around <laughs> that shot right off. There's your 4x1.5, set that off to your side. Grab the new o-ring, and again this is one of those ones that is nearly impossible not to roll due to the size. That's generally okay though. Just be sure to add plenty of lube to it. Lubrication also helps with parts that are moving, which this is actually a moving piece. Believe it or not, it moves up and down with pressure. So we're gonna go ahead and set that into the brass right there and then we're going to put the washers on later. Last part is the the brass uh, the piston adjustment I guess you could call it. It's got two 2x1 two MBR90 O-rings. These are going to be very hard to get off. You're going to take the pick, get up underneath. As you can see I'm struggling with that even. And see how tight this o-ring is doesn't even want to come over it's okay if you break the old o-rings trying to get them off there's one let's see if I can even get this one. Oh wow that was actually a lot easier so probably just gonna have to break that one yep just broke it and then it's easy to get off at that point because it's no longer attached it just peels itself right on off put it on you will have to roll these on uh, it's, I, I'm not gonna say it is impossible but it's nearly impossible to get this little tiny o-ring a little tiny o-ring over this brass but basically my method is grab the piston with your middle fingers or your index fingers sometimes press it against something Take your two thumbnails and stretch it across and it'll pop on like that. Be sure to have a couple extra around because there's no guarantee that you won't break it the first time. I've broken plenty of these trying to put them on. Alright, so here's your second one. It's really difficult to deal with. Alright, there we go. And then just stretch it on the same way. Just as difficult, if not more difficult. But it doesn't want to pop into place. Alright. 
Third time's a charm. Nope, third time's not a charm. Maybe fourth time's a charm? I don't know, 2020 is pretty weird. All this COVID stuff going on. Yeah, oh, well look at there, fourth time's a charm. All right, there you go, got that on. Now, get a little bit of lube. Oh, that's actually way too much. There we go. Lube that up because also this O-ring is very this uh, this moves as well. This is a moving part, so it needs to be lubed. As well as that O-ring is very important. If that's not lubed, that will cause regulator creep. All right, so now we're going to go into the reassembly. Uh, we're going to start with your regulator washers. So I've got those over here. All ten of them. There's ten washers. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You're gonna stack it one face up, one face down. So face up, face down, face up, face down, face up, face down. Face up, face down, face up, and face down. There you go. These do not need to be lubed. These are actually uh, air free, I guess you'd call them. Uh, this is what the atmosphere hole is for to keep these uh, within atmospheric pressure. Alright, so these are just going to set into this just like so it just slides right on in and then threads on as you can see the washers are sticking through and we're going to use our five millimeter to reinstall make sure it's just hand tight make sure that's popped in nice and flush you're good to go so we got the first part down All right, so we're going to be reassembling the second part right here. Uh, this is what includes the the brass uh, adjustment, the piston piston adjustment, uh, the steel ball, your adjusted screw, and your silver cap. Uh, so your the brass piston adjuster has to go through the hole here, and up uh, just right before this O ring, the O ring in the groove right there ends up just right before that. It's a little bit difficult to get to, uh, get it all the way pushed in because of the ledge. Uh, there's the one ledge right here and then there's another ledge right there. So it likes to get stuck really easily. I put a little bit of extra lube on there or a little on the inside of it. But still even in that case it still gets stuck every once in a while. So I'm going to go ahead and just drop it in there and I'm going to skip to when I have it in. Alright so I've got it all the way in now. As you can see, I'm trying not to blind you with the light. Let's see, it's just uh, just barely not flush with the uh, with the O-ring right there. Got about uh, that much in there. So now, what you're gonna do is you just take your steel ball. Well, if I can pick it up, there we go. Steel ball, you just take it, drop it in there. Then you take your regulator screw. Got your hole right here. Get your two mil. You get started, then you get your two million, two millimeter Allen. Go ahead and bomb it out. For this case, don't don't tight don't tightly bomb it out. Just uh, slightly, and then just back off about one and a half rotations. So one and a half. That should set you at a decent regulator pressure. Then after that, you just put that cap back on, and you tighten it down with uh, well, the correct size. You gotta get your three millimeter, or yeah, three millimeter. This tool actually says it right there, right there. So 
Sorry for all the dog here. All right. So there you go. There's the second half. Here's the first half. Now to put these together, I do state the second half and the first half. So the first half is standing vertical so you don't lose your washers. Second half goes on top. I'll just thread together. And you might want to put in a vise or something like that just to make sure you have it tight. I'm going to do that real fast and be right back. All right, there you go. There's the uh, tube amp regulator completely reassembled. If you have any questions about it, please let me know. Drop me a comment or shoot me an email to uh, 910 airgun tuner at gmail.com. Uh, the, G the Gmail account is in the description and uh, on my YouTube page. Uh, yeah, so if you have any questions about it, just let me know. This is the, once again, this regulator for the Dreamline Tube Edition, or all the Dreamlines that have an air tube. Um, not the compact. The compact has a bottle adapter on it. That's not considered an air tube. That's considered a compact cylinder. Uh, but any of these standard air tubes or uh, Wildcat Mark IIs that have the amp installed and all Wildcat Mark IIs. This can also work for a Streamline or any other 34mm air tube. Alright, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Drop a like, uh, drop a comment if you enjoyed it, and uh, see you in the next video.